Yes, everyone, welcome back to the channel. Eric Cantona, and I will listen to this man no matter what he says about Manchester United, has been rejected uh, in his attempt to become um, Manchester United president, um, or at least president of football, or, or something like that. I'll get into the exact quotes in a minute. But I find this really interesting because me and Dre was doing the XG files on uh, Friday. And I mentioned if one of these billionaires was crazy enough to try and get Eric involved, um, I said a CEO, president, you know, similar sort of vibe, isn't it, in terms of that? So um, I find it really interesting time. And I had no advance warning that Adam would do this interview in all honesty. I just thought I would love um, Cantona to be involved in the club in any way. I said it'd be hilarious. So whether it be as a manager, whether it be as a president, whether it be as a CEO, I would love all of those. So. Is what he's saying. So he applied for the president of the football role, which wasn't a role. I don't think that was ever advertised, but it is what it is. He says, I met him, um, Ed Woodward, a few times. Uh, they did not accept it. I still think me or somebody else that they should have somebody for football. It should be somebody from the club who knows football and the club. But they didn't want me to be the president of the club. They didn't, they did not want me. And the fans have to know that I went and travelled to Manchester to give them the opportunity to succeed in the next decades, and they didn't want it. I feel guilty, not trying to help this club do better. I said to myself, for five years, I'll put everything on hold and concentrate 100% on that. And if I concentrate 100% on that, then I can tell you I would do it very well. Now I would feel good with myself. I tried. Nobody in my family can say I did not try anything to help United, and they didn't want it. It's their choice, but I tried. And he actually says... First time I met Sir Alex Ferguson to say this to him and to know what he thought about it, and he thought it was a good idea. Then he introduced me to Mr. Woodward. So it does sound like Sir Alex Ferguson was fully on board with Cantona's idea. Now, on Friday, I did mention the um, the evening with Eric Cantona that we went to, and the evening with Eric Cantona that we, we went to, it had... Um, a bit of a QA, and a and there was at times, it, I said it was very frustrating because it was very frustrating. Cantona was trying to get into some stuff in what he thought about the future of the game and ring fencing ticket prices for young kids and, and doing all sorts of stuff. And it was brilliant, brilliant. Like, it was, it was captivating. I mean, when Cantona talks, you shut the fuck up and you listen. It was enthralling. I, I have been I never silenced as much as I was in my life when someone else was talking, when Kant and I was talking, because it was fascinating. His thoughts, his opinions, what he thought of UEFA, the way competition was going, the TV money. He was getting into some brilliant, brilliant stuff. So to have him as a president, I think the club would be doing the right thing. You know, not, not necessarily. Would it mean that we would make the most money as a football club? Probably not. Because he would prioritise football over everything else and he would get the football thing correct. And that's what a football club should be good at. You should be good. It's like if Levi's tell you that they're bringing a car out. No, be good at doing jeans. That's all we're here for, right? Be good at the thing you're supposed to be good at. Don't fucking bring out a telly. No one wants to watch the fucking Levi's 501 TV, right? Be mint at jeans. That's what we're here for. Manchester United Football Club should be the beacon of light the cutting edge technology of football. It's not a media company. It's not a vehicle for sponsorships. It's football. And it makes its money by football stuff. So anyway, he talks about the current owners, the Glazers, um, all that sort of stuff. And I'm going to get onto something that might link all of this lot together. So he says, yes, last year I proposed to the club to change their way. Um, explain how he met up with Mr. Woodward towards the back end of 2021. Said Ed Woodward is great at marketing, but not great at football. United should have a chairman, and they should have a president of marketing, and then a president of football who's in charge of all the decisions in football. So I proposed to them that I should be the president of the football side of things. I met him a few times, but they didn't accept it. I still think that me or somebody else um, should have somebody for the football side. And it should be someone from the club who knows the club. John Murta, um, when pointed out that the club do not have a... Um, a football director in John Murta. He says, yes, but it's still not a president of football. Talking about fan ownership, he says, I thought about something also. The club has on social media hundreds of thousands of fans, actually millions. 
if they create an application so that 50% of the club could be sold, then why would, should you have one or two people invest 500 million? You said you could have hundreds of millions of people who spend 10 euros, 20 euros, 100 euros, 1,000 euros. 50% of the club is owned by the real fans of Manchester United. I smell something in the works here. Stadium rebrandings. We are talking about my favourite football stadiums earlier. But now all the stadiums are called Emirates or Alliance. These stadiums have lost the soul and history of the club like Arsenal and West Ham. I played at those old stadiums, Highbury, Upton Park. I spoke with Arsenal fans and they hate the new stadium. These fans lost the soul of their clubs. Fortunately, Old Trafford is still Old Trafford, Anfield is still Anfield. But can you imagine Anfield, uh, Old Trafford becomes a stadium uh, by a brand? If one day they do that, I'm sorry, but I'm not a fan of United anymore and I quit football forever. Please do not call this the Nestle Stadium or the Amazon, please. Old Trafford is Old Trafford. Now, again, he's on the money. Every single thing Cantona has said here, he's speaking from the heart like one of us. Literally just completely aligned. The fan ownership, the stadium rebrand, the focus on the football kind of things. Cantona fucking gets it. Now, when you hear about the potential consortium that Tony O'Neill was talking about last week, and you add up the fact that there's potential player involvement in this, we sort of theorised on Friday that it could be Eric. They mentioned it wasn't the Class of 92. It could be Eric. I wish so badly that this is it. It feels like he's making the, you know, talking about the fan ownership if you're involved in this consortium and you've not reached out to Eric, you're a fucking idiot. Because the one way that you get people on board with your consortium is you get Eric involved. You allow him to be the spokesperson for your consortium. And that you actually give him some power so he's not just a fucking spokesperson. You allow him to make changes to the football side of things. This is a guy that fucking gets it. He's never held back. You could never have Cantona as your puppet. You have to have him on side and you have to allow him to make things happen. He's never going to be that guy that comes out and says the, ni the niceties. He's criticised people for being involved in promoting uh, what's going on in Qatar. Ultimately, FIFA are the ones to blame for that. At the very top level, by giving it to Qatar in the first place. He will always speak out on the things that are from a fan's perspective, and I think having someone involved at the top end of not just Manchester United, but involved in where Manchester United's standing is within football would be a massive positive for everybody involved in football. There's too many people involved in football at the moment that are just trying to take away the soul of it. You know, things like the European Super League, can you imagine even floating that in a business meeting while Eric Cantona sat there? Punch you in the fucking mouth. And honestly, there needs to be some sort of um, personalities in football that are protecting things from the fans' perspective like that. Um, Jordan says, the king sells the club just by being in the room. Nailed on. Uh, Notch says, Eric's so many great attributes of honesty, innovation, and integrity. Yep. Um, Cantona also posted about the unrest in Iran. Respect. Yep, I mean, it's going off in Iran in a big way. Um, over the death of a female journalist over there, supposedly tortured because they wasn't happy with how she wore uh, her headscarf. I think that was the way it's gone down. Good to see the people of Iran rising up. This, you know, the Cantona speaks out about these sorts of things on a, a consistent basis. Um, not just I love what Eric said about examples and how he's just a human being and exercises his freedom of expression. Panzanar was misunderstood by a lot of the fucking red tops in this country because footballers were just Paul Mersons. You know, they got on the booze, they said funny things, and that's how they wanted their sports stars. Cantona was more cerebral than that. Cantona thought on a different level. Cantona walked away from the game at 31. He probably could have milked a contract out of United for several more years. And he went, ah, do you know what? I'm not entirely happy with my performances recently. I'm dipping in a bit. Um, Ed says, Zlatan is Eric's son. You can tell he was watching United VHS as a child. Um, David Cullen says, prefer Evra over Eric for this. Sorry. I, 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 for starters, 
ever didn't take the job, he was offered a, do- a job, or he was in discussion for a job, and he didn't take the job because it wasn't a real job. Um, being honest, I think I'd rather go with Cantona over this. I would love ever involved in the club. I think he's got a hell of a lot of positives um, in terms of selling the club. I think from a directorship, I would lean towards Cantona. Um, Gallic Breadman says, I love the idea of having Cantona as president or some such post, but would it ultimately be more prudent to have Van der Sar or someone like him as a CEO? Well, Cantona wasn't asking to be CEO, was he? Let me find the exact quote again. Because he talked about having someone for commercials and someone for football and someone for blah, 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 blah. Um, find the exact quote. You know, I should have a chairman. So that would obviously be the chairman. That might be the, the role that he gives uh, Van der Sar. Then they should have a president of marketing and then a president of football. And there's probably more. I mean, basically, it's just a, I think he means director, but it is what it is, I think. Um, Trout says, United aren't going to want a loose cannon peeling back the wallpaper and exposing the cracks. No, there's. I think there's more chance of me rocking up as president than there is Cantona um, under the Glazers. I think that Cantona and this role only happens with a regime change. Red Devils says no ex-player. Why? Strikes Ferguson wanted ex-players involved at every level. Sir Alex Ferguson was massively um, sort of influenced in how Ajax and Bayern Munich ran things. And he thought they were better off because of the fact that they had ex-players riddled throughout it. Uh, Josh D says, jobs for the boys, basically. No, I don't think it is jobs for the boys. I think it's jobs for the people who are, are, um, are qualified for the job. Is it jobs for the boys at Bayern Munich? Been pretty successful over the, uh, over the years, and, and so have Ajax. Um, Batu Sai says Cantona can be a little hinge though um, correct I doubt any board would want someone of such a strong character I think it's um, it shows their insecurities if they're not prepared to give Cantona a go because if you was truly thinking about only the positives uh, and what positives Cantona is going to bring he was a loose cannon as a player but you give him the freedom to do what he does and he created magic You do the same with him in the boardroom because he he gets it. He isn't Woodward, some fucking you know, non-football fan banker that's looking at it from that perspective. He's, he's looking at it from the romantic side. And I think if you get that bit right, the football and the romance right, that works. Uh, Notch says, I think president of football might be a more description in France. You could be right. Um, Deep Blue says, we are the only big team that don't have a proper director of football. Uh, Damien says, Cantona will put football club back on the badge. I think you're probably right. Um, he's an alcoholic though, Steve. One, is he? Two, so fucking what? So was Sir Alex Ferguson. Alex Ferguson's fucking loved her fucking whiskey. So fucking what? You let him do the job and find out if he can fucking do it. He says the right shit. We've never seen if he can prove to do the right shit. Like I said, if you're a consortium coming in, I'd be looking to bring him in. This is, when is he a fucking alcoholic? Uh, North Florida Bear says, reminds me of Philips. Um, they make light bulbs, air fryers, computer monitors, toothbrushes, too many different products. <laughs> Daria says, I thought Woodward was gone. He is gone. Um, this was back in 2021. He's only just revealed it in an interview today. Uh, Erim says, get what you're saying, but there are companies like Yamaha that are amazing at mu- music and motorcycles. It's not relevant, is it, to Manchester United? Um, Warren says, having someone like um, Eric aligned to an investment of billions is too much of a risk. No business person would accept a loose cannon speaking out of turn. They would if they're fans. People need to stop treating Manchester United like a business and start treating it like a football club. Once it starts being treated like a football club, it gets good at being a football club again. And then we can start actually making money on the back of what we do as a football club. 
Uh, Moran says, surely there isn't that ever this much smoke without fire. Seems to be a lot of stuff stacking up, doesn't it? IR says, if it didn't work under Woodward, um, who's to say it won't work under Arnold? Ultimately, it's still the Glazers. Um, Ed says, Cantona drinks champagne, so he's a classic Hulky. <laughs> Um, Diglin says everyone said uh, you do the best work when you do what you love and Eric loves football and Woodward and the Glazers just love making money this is it ultimately what Cantona is going to do is do the things that he thinks are best to the best of his degree and like he said he put his entire life on hold to focus on this for five years and I think he would leave us in a far better position that's it and I think that's what you would all only want to see I would have no doubts, no qualms about what he is um, planning to achieve with the club and how he's planning to achieve it. Uh, Jamil says, Steve, that's the problem. No one sees this as a football club but the fans, and that's the biggest problem. Yep. Um, it's the top and bottom of it, I think. Um, Ellen says, why was the football club dropped off the badge? I think it happened. I think it happened in 1998, I think. Um, and it was to do with registering the trademark of the football club um, as Manchester United. I, think, I don't think they could register the, the old badge in its entirety because it was an older badge. It had been in use for some time. I don't know if it, I don't know if it had been a set amount of time that it had been in use. I know they, they dropped... They dropped off the Three Rivers in the Shield because it was a Manchester City Council trademark, and that's why we introduced the devil to it, so it could be registered trademark and put onto products. But it was something to do with marketing the club globally and merchandise. Tom says, I don't think Cantona would be the best at role. Someone like Van der Sar is better qualified for the role with the experience at Ajax. Is a CEO at Ajax? I don't think that's doing the same thing. I think it's a totally different thing. Uh, Josh says, inmates running the asylum comes to mind we can't that. Why are you just all on like this pure negative vibe of him? Calling him crazy, calling him an alcoholic. Yeah. I, I'm not sure the vibe in this one here. Businessmen run clubs end of, yeah, and uh, like 100% of football clubs lose money. So maybe someone else should have a fucking go at running a football club. Uh, Warren says, what happens if there's a disagreement between the investors and Eric while he works? There, as much as I love him, I think it would end badly, probably. Um, Chris says, we are far more likely to be devoured than empowered by our sense of romance. Ultimately, football's romantic. There's 92 professional clubs in English football. Every single one of them thinks that they're going to win the Premier League. 91 of them are wrong. But that's the whole reason that you turn up. Hope is the reason everyone turns up to sports grounds. Simple. James says he's cared more than anyone else. Fact. Lee says Cantona's very intelligent and knows what he's talking about. Honestly, some of the... That, that, um, that audience with that I went to no one's ever sort of published the the words that he said. I don't think anyone's ever recording it, but it was it was incredible listening. Um, Liam says surely Gary Neville would be better than Cantona. Gary Neville owns a football club. Not going to be Gary Neville, is it? Lucas says even if it did go tits up, it'd be a right laugh when it happened. Getting involved on that one. Uh, Some says a good thing Cantona has done is expose Woodward even more. Well, Woodward's gone, so it's irrelevant. I mean, I've no idea what Woodward's going to go. He'll probably end up at a top job somewhere because of the things that he's already got on his CV. But it is what it is. Fuck him. What else can Cantona uh, bring other than players on the pitch? Vision. Honestly, like, I can't replicate, I can't remember the exact quotes about it, but 
he had a vision for football. This was four years ago, maybe five years ago. He had a vision for football. He talked about um, things UEFA are doing. He, he's, he has got a vision for football with um, with the sort of things that he believes in. And like you said, you know, he's spoken there about fan ownership. I've heard him talk about ticket pricing and the fact that there's not enough young people going to the games. You know, I'm not even necessarily talking about anything on the field Cantona would do here, but he would have the club running in the correct manner off the pitch, and I think that's so important. He would, in my opinion, he would reconnect the fans and the club. And even if you're not successful in terms of trophies, that is still a success because... There's, there is more to football than just shitting trophies, right? Ultimately, we want trophies and we want to be a successful on-the-field team. But the feeling with the football club at the moment, it's almost like you're, you're a United fan in spite of the club. And I would love that to change. And I think Cantona could help change that. Um... Bonpool says, Eric is, a very, Eric is a very smart guy, just bonkers with speeches at time. Um, I think it's not necessarily just that he's bonkers. I think he just, he doesn't have a filter. He's not scared. You know, what is he here to lose? He's not one of the pundits that could lose a high-paying job at Sky. He isn't someone that's got a job in football. The only job he wants in football would be this one. Ed says, I thought we turned up to matches in the hope one day that they'd randomly point at us in the crowd and say, come on and play. <laughs> um, I asked, let's imagine Cantona comes in and does what Maldini did for AC Milan. Correct. What did, a what did Paolo Maldini have in terms of um, experience? What did Edwin van der Sar have in terms of experience? That was his first job. Everyone's talking about, oh, you need someone like van der Sar because he's got the experience. Well, he didn't have the experience to get the job that he's doing such a good job at. Do you know what I mean? Um, could he approach the consortium and Jim Radcliffe says James I wouldn't be surprised the timing of this interview I find very curious it could just be that Adam Crafton reached out to him and he said yes but I don't believe in coincidences usually I, I wonder if I wonder if this is circling the wagons a little bit for what's planned and honestly I, I would fucking piss my pants if Canton out um, TDF says he's a clever man he may come across loopy but geniuses are a bit batty um, Denval says listen to him all the time he's a visionary you see things from the fans perspective and that's the reason why I know he'd be successful Dutch says he's not bonkers he just speaks his mind that isn't insecure I think that's it um, King Dino says Cantona strikes me as being on the spectrum that's one of the things that focuses him and drives him I think he's a very misunderstood character. Um, I think he'd just come across totally different. I, I, he was definitely different to the stereotypical English player of the late 80s, early 90s, for sure. When you listen to the things that, the way he inspired um, literally the class of 92 and that European Cup winning the treble, he had a big hand in that, a massive hand in that. Um, Ed says Maldini linked up with the new owners before they even put a bid in and became the new face of the new ownership. Could exactly be exactly what we want. Lewis says speaking his mind is why the Glazers won't have him. Yeah. They're very secretive and very quiet. That's not what they're about. And they've never tried to connect with the fans in any way, shape, or form. I think they fucking hate us. I mean, they probably should, but they, I think they do. I think they think we're fucking irrelevant. Whereas Cantona would flip that completely on its head. Steve Lillard with Super Chat says, I bring Cantona back as CEO, Van der Sar as director of football, ever on the board, uh, and book back for the kids. Um, Rooney best manage, says Manu Mangua. Uh, Rooney's got a bit more work to do. Yeah. North Florida Bear says, great stuff, Stephen. We need to keep this momentum going. Manchester United needs Eric. 
ultimately need the Glazers gone. But I think if the new consortium is smart, and you would hope that they've not just made a billion by accident, you would hope that they, they're going to try and bring in somebody like Eric. And I think that would be very, very big for them. Um, I am Steve says, uh, Ragnik broke, spoke his mind and they sacked him. Cantona would be the same bucket as Radnick and the Glazers don't like that. That's why I, I don't think he's happening under the Glazers. I think it has to be um, part of the consortium which takes us into the post-Glazers era. John says, imagine having a player in every level. Um, yeah, I, I could, and I don't see why you wouldn't. Ultimately, it's the right person for the right job. And there's some people that have actually gone on and managed without having excellent careers. And there's some people that have become sensational analysts without having excellent careers. And you know, your medical staff should be medical experts. You don't just want someone in there because they played once. You know, everyone's got to to prove they've got the, the capabilities of doing the job. And that goes from everyone... From you know, from the left back to the manager to the assistants to everybody, there's got to be um, a pursuit of excellence. It just has to be. Um, Some says you're right. New owners is a start. Then we can look at potential changes uh, within the club. Um, Some says Bayern is a club run by ex football players. Yeah, and it's in Fergie's book. I think it's in leading. One of the two books he's done. When he talks about that was something that he really tried to enforce with Martin Edwards. Um, and he, he didn't really talk about it in the Glazers. I guess there was a little bit of pushback from him. Glazers and uh, Chris says, to not have Eric in the game has been such a shame, knowing he offered his services and will be ignored with this shit. Um, Mr. King says, I doubt ownership will hire him, but he's probably what we need. Uh, he plays for the badge. Diogo says the idea of having a club involved with a community, democratic um, and strong links with fans and labour roots and actually sell and make profit. Arnold will have a different vision than Woodward. You'd hope that's how it goes down. Um, Lucky says, I changed this football club like Lord Sugar. What? Not says that it should be about whether or not they can do the job. Um, could be players, could be otherwise. People need to stop pigeonholing. That's it. I get the impression, you know, the president, there are hiring and firing requirements underneath a president, for sure. But the president is someone that generally needs to give a vision and say the right things. And I think Kant and I could do that. Definitely. Uh, righty, I'm going to roll it there. But um, cheers for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe. I'm going to do a reaction to the shit show that England is later on if you want to come and join me. And we'll probably turn it into a little bit of a late night live. Um, but again, always, cheers for tuning in. Let us know your thoughts in the comments on um, whether or not you would have Cantona involved at the football club going forward. Um, what would your dream sort of um, front of office be? CEO, director of football, football president. I guess. What staff would you have around? Um, I'll see you in the next one. Later.